Good day, viewers. Welcome to today's administration. God bless you all. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for today. We exalt, we magnify your name because you're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I am that I am, she can glory. Our most I go, we thank you so much for your protection of our life. We thank you for the love you have upon us. We thank you for such a beautiful year. We thank you so much for our family. We bless and adore your name because you're such an awesome God. You're so good. You've been protecting us. I want to cover this podium onto your care, the viewers, the subscribers. I want to cover all those ones who come in on Friday for prophetic message. I thank you for my family. I surround the premises with the blood of Jesus Christ and I bind any activity that does not glorify Christ in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. We cover and soak ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you, viewers. Let us take this song. Just as I am with one, one plea, all that I blood was shed for us and all that the has come to the old Lamb of God we come we come just as we are and waiting and to read our soul of the spot to thee whose blood can cleanse us all from spots O Lord our God our God just as we are that we receive we welcome her Pardon our sin, O oh Lord, we really all our problem, O oh, as we come. Because the promise we believe, O oh Lamb of God, O oh Lamb of God, just as we are with one, we are one of God, we come, we come, just as we are, thy love and all has broken all the barrier down. Now to thy, O Lord, we come, O Lamb of God, we come, and we come. Our brethren, we thank you so much for the hymn and song. Then we thank you for the worship, accept all our worship, and accept all our thanks and adoration for today, in Jesus' name. Bedroom, we will not waste the time again. We'll quickly go into uh, illustration for today. And of course, just as I, I post on the website, and I did say that uh, we're going to teach today about discipleship, how to disciple our family and our household. And so before I go, uh, I want every viewers and uh, those subscribers, please can you try to write your prayer points down for those ones who comes on Friday uh, for our prophetic uh, meeting. Write all your prayer points down. Uh, as you put those prayer points down, we are going to tell God to, um, you know, come to our needs and come to our aid so that you help us with all our prayer points and see how those prayer points can be answered. And of course, I want you to please put all those prayer points down. doesn't matter if it's 20 prayer requests you want. And make sure you keep ticking them as each one has been answered. And by the end of the day, I will tell you what to do as soon as all of the prayer points are all answered. Thank you so much. Now, today, uh, this, uh, our, our topic today is discipling uh, the flocks and our household. Discipling the flocks and our household. 
No, it is much easier, you know, to say it. But is it really easy to disciple? No. But uh, let's see what Jesus Christ, the legacy of Jesus Christ left behind for us and see uh, how we can follow the footsteps and see if we can uh, try to do something within our environment and uh, the place of God. The Bible said, I built my house, um, it said the house of the Lord and uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, I tried to look at the Hebrew word of discipleship. Now, it's the first one that I, I see here uh, on one of the websites, it said uh, Yara. Yara is a teacher. Yara is a teacher. The Hebrew word for teacher is called Yara. Now, the Hebrew word for student is called Lamad. Lamad, that's one. So you can check it up yourself. And also it said to call teacher again, it said Talmidi. Talmidi Yeshu. Talmidi Yeshu. So I try to uh, define the Hebrew word. Uh, I think I will improve in it, uh, on it next time. God bless you. So, uh, of course, our text is going to be taken from Psalm 143, verse 8 to 11, and then John chapter 21, verse 17, and John chapter 13, verse 35. Psalm 143, verse 8 to 11, from Psalm 143, verse 8 to 11, and John chapter 21, verse 17, and John 13, verse 35. They say, if you love he said, if you love me, he said, feed my uh, a disciple. That's what Jesus Christ was emphasizing. You know, he was telling his uh, disciple to please take care of his flocks when he's away because he knows quite all right that, you know, when you leave the flocks out there, you know, there are devourers. There are all kinds of um, wild animals. So you, we don't want uh, the flock of Christ to be eaten by any kind of uh, animal so but today uh we're not going to waste much time i just want us to quickly pick up our points because we're going to be going to our warfare room too shortly after this message so i want us to read one of the scripture and then you can read the rest for yourself i want us to take one of the scripture god bless you as you do that with me you can uh Quickly open to the book of uh, John chapter 21 verse 17 and let's see what the scripture is telling us. John chapter 21 verse uh, 17. John chapter 21 verse 17. Praise the Lord as you do that. John 21 17 it said, uh, I'm going to be taking it from uh, King James Version here. John 21 17. John 21 17 said, He said to him the third time, Simon son of jonah do you love me he said simon son of jonah do you love me he said peter was great because he said to him third time do you love me <laughs> brethren you all know the uh the story of peter he did told jesus christ i'm not going to deny you pastor i love you so much i'm not going to deny you but he did deny jesus christ three good times and then of course the cock crow and as soon as the cock crow, of course, he remember what Jesus Christ was telling him. But I don't want to tarry much time here. But um, the other one again, Psalm, 50, Psalm 143, verse 8 to 11. Psalm 143, verse 8 to 11. Let's see what Psalm 143, 8 to 11 say. Psalm 143, 8 to 11. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to take it again from my King James Version. King James Version, Psalm 143 verse 8 to 11 it said it said cause me to hear the loving kindness in the morning for indeed do i trust cause me to know thy way wherein i should walk for i lift up my soul unto thee deliver me O lord from my enemies flee unto thee to hide me lord it said teach me to do thy will for thou art my god the spirit is good and lead me into the land of the uprightness praise the lord it's a quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness is sake it's a sake it's a bring my soul out of trouble now you are a shepherd you're a bishop you're a teacher just like the hebrew word said yara you're a yara or are you a tamilder when you are Tamil, Tamil is a student. So you are ready to be tutored. You know, you're all ears. You have to be very humble. Now, one of the scripture here did talk about in you know, a humility. You know, if you are not humble, how can we hear the teacher? How can we follow the, the teacher's instruction? You understand? So we have to be very humble so that we can follow the teacher's instruction. It's easier said than done sometimes. 
we can say it in a bar like that, but trust me, you know, um, if for you to be very humble is a virtue, and then it makes you uh, to uh, assimilate exactly what uh, your Yara is telling you, according to the Hebrew word, Yara teacher, and then of course you, the, uh, the Talmud, and the Lamad, which is the student, you are all ears to hear what your teacher is telling you. Brethren, I'm not quickly going to uh, just uh, stay on that point. I have any uh, other point to stress about. It's a, it's a warning and teaching. So the goal of discipleship was to pass the torch of Torah from generation to generation. Now, you're a teacher, I'm a teacher, I'm a disciple, I'm a pastor. I'm a reverend, so I have to take the torchlight to another generation. I have to make sure that this generation, you know, who look onto you as a teacher wants to hear what you're saying. Now, some people say, uh, do as I say, but don't do as I do. No, it's not like that. Jesus Christ expects the disciple to do as he, he do, and of course, say as he do. So uh, automatically, they, they have to emulate him to uh, put into practice whatever thing they see Jesus Christ do. And that's what, you know, is being reflected to at our home too. If you have little kids, it all depends on what you teach these children. You understand? So now, if you tell them sit here and they sit and tell them don't go and they don't move and you ask them to sit, they will sit because you are inculcating some positive teaching into their lives. And then they will live with it forever. Now, it all depends on what you deposit on these children or you deposit on your flocks in the house of God. So we, we the teacher, have to be very careful. So, and then be watchful. When they see you at the mall, they want to see you, the teacher, tell them uh, exactly what you taught them that you are practicing too, so that they will look unto you. And then when they see you on the street, they want to know that, oh, that's what my teacher told me to do. I can see my teacher doing the same thing. So they want to do the same thing too. Now, if they see you in the church, or maybe you are the, you are the pastor's wife, uh, they want to see you dressed nicely, you know, well covered. So they will say, oh yeah, my pastor's wife is well covered, so I will cover myself properly too. So that's the meaning of the Torah. We are handing the Torah, you know, from one generation to the generation. But how are you handing the Torah? And what kind of message are you passing? on and how are you you know discipling the flocks in your household this is you know you know matters a lot in the presence of god but some people might say in this dispensation they will say oh you know what it doesn't really really matter it doesn't matter you know don't you know it's uh, is the world now this is you know it's the new age so you know things can flow you know it doesn't matter it's you know forget about the old school i know we're talking about things you know of this jet age you have to you know be pre-calculative well you know what the I don't want us to be, you know, very embarrassed when we get to heaven, you know, on the last day. I don't want God to hold us accountable of what we did not do right and how we didn't follow the scripture to teach, you know, this one's the right thing or disciple them the right way. Now, guess what? There are questions here. He said, how is, he said, how can we disciple a household in a godly manner? Number one, through biblical spiritual moral conduct and teaching. He said, true biblical spiritual moral conduct and teaching. And then, of course, it said, it said, true, it said, through the way you present yourself and you speak. Now, the word you speak, sometimes they bring the word, you know, contains life. The Bible said, whatever things we speak is life and spirit. If you say, my child is going to be well with you. My child, you are going to be the prime minister tomorrow. My child, you will be the president. My child, you shall be an overcomer. You, you know those positive things you are saying into your children. You know those positive things you are saying to your flocks. You are not taking the a, a transfer of aggression from somewhere to your flux just because somebody gets you angry you just want to take the whole thing and put it in flux now guess what whatever thing you deposit in the life of this one guess what happened that's exactly what it's going to be manifesting so we have to be very careful what we say how we do and the way we think our continence and our behavior and demeanor you know is readable don't you think that you just walk somehow they say oh look at how he's walking they already put meanings onto it so we have to be very careful as teachers and us as rabbi and also as bishops and apostles you know in our churches god bless you and then there's another thing again that you can take in matthew chapter 23 verse 8 to 12 because of time we cannot read it you can please 
check up that for yourself. It says, through the way as I as I do and not as I say. Praise the Lord. As I do and not as I say. I will say it is easier to run our mouth to say. You know, sometimes they say the talk is very cheap according to one Bible interpretation. It's much easier to run the mouth, to read the news, to talk anyhow, but it's to put them into practice. So I wish that you and I would try as much as we can to put these things into practice so that we can, you know, uh, inoculate Yes, like you're injecting, you know, the positive things into the life of your flocks and your family, or you can inculcate a good teaching into their life that it's it's unforgettable. Praise the Lord that God is going to bless you for it. Because whatever I tonight do or say today is all accountable against me in heaven. And then watch now. It said, but you are not be called. Rabbi, according to Matthew chapter 23, verse 8 to 12, he said, Do not be, you are not called rabbi. He said, For you have one teacher. And who is the teacher? He said, The teacher is our Messiah, Jesus Christ. He said, You can call the Father. He said, But we have one Father in heaven. That Father, when you ask him to give you a fish, it's not going to give you a stone. If you ask him to give you a bread, it's not going to give you a snake. So that's the kind of Father we have. But trust me, our earthly Father. I have to be rest assured you can testify or attest to the fact of what I'm saying right now. It's not all your requests you give to your father, he do for you. He'll tell you, son, my daughter, I love you so much, but I'm, I have, you know, I don't have much. This is the five cents that I have. I'm going to give to you, but this is what I can afford, you see? So they cannot really fulfill all our requests sometimes. But if a heavenly father, of course, who is all abounding in grace and love and abundance and wealth when we ask him and say father i need this you know with thanksgiving and adoration you are able to you know tell him he's going to give you whatever thing you ask for so that's why you have to be very careful what comes out of your mouth sometimes some people say oh i have a good mouth when i say things they come positive some people say oh yeah you know when i speak sometimes you know it's not good but i pray that we should speak positive always into our life in the mighty name of Jesus so that it will yield a positive result in our life to the hearers, to the flocks, and to our family or our household. You understand? So he said, the other one again, he said, now the greatest among you all is called the servant. It's still the same, Matthew chapter 23, verse 8 to 12. That's what the scripture is trying to tell us. He said, when we exalt ourselves, he obeys us. That when we humble ourselves, he exalts us. I don't know that calculation, and I have no idea what the scripture is trying to say. Well, humility is okay. To be very humble is still okay. But what he's saying is that if I decide to exalt myself, or, you know, be very pompous, or try to tell everybody I'm something, well, I'm nothing, God said he's going to be watching me, and then he's going to obey me. But I don't want the Lord to obey me. I want him to promote me. So I'll try to follow his teaching and be very humble and do according to what he said. Number three, it's a true love and respect. You can take that from John chapter 14, verse 15. True love and respect. You have to love your flocks. You have to love your 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 household so that you know what love is reciprocal apart from that if you love god and if you if you trust him he gives you he pours in you so many things you understand you have so many talents you you know the, the you know the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof and everything that is in it it's all yours you have dominion according to the book of genesis you can you, know, you can dominate every any creature that god has created because because guess what? It's giving you the power to do that. Praise the Lord. He said, uh, in John chapter 14, verse 15, he said, If you love me, you keep my commandments again. And I pray we should try to strive to keep the commandment of the Lord in Jesus' name. Brother, I'm going to quickly go because of our time. It's a true family altar devotion. Now, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 6. Now, how can you keep this true uh, family altar devotion? Well, in my little understanding, I used to remember when, you know, my parents usually to take us to a Sunday school. I appreciate those days and I thank the Lord for those days too. And I think they really drop a lot into me. But what am I trying to say? Now, we still do one thing in the morning. Sometimes we drag our feet to the altar uh, in the morning to prayer. Sometimes they say, oh, you have to get up. You're going to be the one to read the Bible today. And then, of course, do you really know something? It's really, really helping. You know why? Because guess what? It set a wall of fire around about you. An edge of blessings and protection is around you. Praise 
praise the Lord. So there's another thing again that we're going to stress about here. He said, through love between partners. No, because guess what? Since love is reciprocal, no, your flocks, your disciples, they look at you. They want to see how you love my father. You understand how you love God? Jesus Christ said, I love my father. I'll do his will. I already want to do his work when it's daytime. Night comments when no one can do his work. And that's what God see. I mean, do. I mean, guess what? Uh, but the disciples, they observe Jesus Christ. They really know that he loves God. So because they know he loved God, they emulate him. They took after his own part. And then they do exactly what Jesus Christ, you know, do. Praise the Lord. He said, there's another point again. He said, you always pray without ceasing. You pray always. Praise the Lord. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. He said, coordinate through intersection. What is intercession? Intercession, it is your responsibility to pray and intercede even though your uh, son and your daughter is in, is in, is in uh, Afghanistan or is in the Middle East somewhere, but maybe one part of the end of the earth, the world. What happened here is that you, when you go on your knees, say, My son, I cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. My daughter, I cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. It is well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not walk into danger. You danger, I bind your activity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Nobody will drag all my children anywhere in the mighty name of Jesus. Nobody will drag my flocks anywhere or my disciple in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. I rain the, the rain of mercy upon them, my God. And I set loose the host of angels to be abide them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You can take that from Luke chapter 11, verse 2, verse 6, because Jesus Christ taught us how to pray, brethren. We have come to the end of today's teaching. We're going to continue part two next week by the grace of God because discipleship, the topic discipleship is quite a large topic. And of course, in the due course in the future, we're going to be having other teachers who is going to come on board, who is going to tell us more about discipleship. God bless you. Let us quickly take this prayer point, ladies. So, all of my father. No, and then there's one thing again, brethren, God bless you, before we quickly go into our prayer point. Now, what's the benefit feet of you trying to be a good disciple? Number one, it said the benefit is keeping, uh, uh, it said there's going to be cooperation, there's going to be uh, an agreement, then these things yield to positive results because, because the cooperation is there, because the agreement is there, praise the Lord. It said, uh, it said there's going to be a strong wall that is going to be surrounding you people together in Joshua 1, 9. It said, uh, there's going to be abundance of peace and joy, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Uh, number 4, it said, no oppression, no confusion, and then there's, going to, there's not going to be hardship because guess what? You go according to the precept of Christ, praise the Lord. It said, now, when the blood of Jesus Christ is it's been sprinkled around you together. Now it makes the enemy not to come closer because he knows that you are having the protection of Christ. Praise the Lord. Brethren, let us go to our prayer point. Say, mercy of God, overshadow me in Jesus' name. Mercy of the Lord, overshadow me in Jesus' name. The mercy of the Lord, overshadow me in Jesus' name. The mercy of the Lord, overshadow me in Jesus' name. Say, the favor of God, overshadow me in Jesus' name. The favor of God, overshadow me in Jesus' name. The favor of God, overshadow me in Jesus' name. Say, the blood of Jesus, uh, overshadow my flocks and my household in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus, say, overshadow my flocks and my household in in Jesus' name, said the blood of Jesus overshadow my flocks and my household. In Jesus' name, said the blood of Jesus overshadow my flocks and my household. In Jesus' name, said the love of Christ surround me. <laughs> Hallelujah! With the wall of fire, said the love of God surround me with the love of God and my family. In Jesus' name, say Lord, we ask your angel, Father, to be on guard over our territory, our family. In Jesus' name, brethren, we have come to the end. Of this teaching today and i pray by the grace of god when we put these things into practice we're going to see the result the point is that what's the purpose of teaching the teaching is you want to put these things into practice so that you can see and and see the result in a very positive way god bless you brethren uh, let us pray. God bless you. Father, we thank you because we have come to the end of this today's teaching about discipleship and what to do and what not to do and how we are going to put these things into practice uh, so that you can bless us more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I thank you for the viewers. I thank you for the brethren, wherever they are hooking up to this platform, wherever in the whole wide world. I cover them specially with the blood of Jesus Christ and I say it is well with them and their family in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm merciful, Father, 
we thank you so much God because Jesus Christ did teach us how to put these things into practice I believe by the time we put these things into practice uh, we are going to be blessed with our family in Jesus name God bless the viewer bless everyone of God that is open up from the north south west and east God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you Father, because you covered especially with the blood of Jesus for those ones who are sick heal them in Jesus name those ones who are in need provide for them in the mighty name of Jesus and for those ones God Father who actually need help send them angels who go for that to their camp in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you Father, because of had a prayer in Jesus name we pray amen and God bless you brethren do not forget about your prayer point for next week as Christ tarried we are going to be taking our prayer points and then you're going to take it anything that you want the Lord to do for you as we pray upon it if the Lord answers it of course automatically I am waiting for the testimony God bless you and see you next week Pastor Esther bye for now